I'm Brian Ierson, one of the trainers with the Computer Workshop. In today's tutorial, we're going to go over how you can create your own custom stencils in Microsoft Visio. For this example, I'm going to create a mock switch for a network diagram. If you needed to draw an exact copy of one of the switches that you cannot find a stencil for, if you can load in an image and then trace over it, delete the image, group your objects, and build the stencil from that, you will be able to recreate exact replicas of custom components. So to start with, I'm going to open a new stencil. As you can see, I have a blank document. There are no stencils. And we're going to use the More Shapes dropdown in the Stencils pane to locate new stencil. As you create new stencils, they will be named stencil with a number. We will rename this once we have content. To begin, I'm going to draw a port. So we're going to use the rectangle tool, which can be found in the tools group on the home tab of the ribbon, and just draw a little square or rectangle. Now I cannot see what I'm doing here, so I want to zoom in on that by holding down the control key and using the wheel on my mouse. Then I can let go of the control key and use the wheel on my mouse to reposition my page so that I can see the object in question. Now that I can see my rectangle, I'm going to go ahead and apply some formatting by going and using the Shape Styles Tools group where I can access the fill and I'm going to fill this with a dark gray and I'm also going to remove the line. If I want to resize this or work with it in any way, I'm going to use the pointer tool and adjust the height and width accordingly. To ensure that the next part is formatted in exactly the same way, I'm going to duplicate this shape by holding down the control key and dragging a copy of the shape over, letting go of the mouse, then the key. Now I can scale that and position it so that it looks like the little clip space on a port. Selecting both of these objects to ensure that they are perfectly aligned, I'm going to the Home tab. In the Arrange group, I'm going to locate the Align dropdown, and I'm going to choose to align them on their centers. While I'm here in the Arrange group, I'm going to also use the Group button to locate the group command and combine these objects so that they act as a single unit. Next I want to put a background to this, so back to the rectangle tool, and I'll draw a shape a little bit larger than the port opening. Applying a fill color, I'm going to use a dark, not quite as dark gray, and again I'm going to remove the line and then use the Send to Back button in the Arrange group. To continue making adjustments to the size of this background object, I'm going to switch to the Pointer tool. And we can adjust the height and width as we need. Again, to make sure that these objects are perfectly aligned, I'm going to select them all by using the Pointer tool and drawing a selection box that covers all of these objects or shapes using the Align drop-down and centering them. Selecting both objects again, we're going to group them. This time I'm going to do that by simply right-clicking on the selection, locating the Group command, Fly Out, and choosing Group. Now that the port shape has been created, we're going to want to add some shape data properties so that we can uniquely identify each port in our switch in the future. To do this, I'm going to simply right click on the object, locate data, and I'm going to bring up the define shape data window. In the define shape data window, I'm going to change the label to port. I'm going to assign a numeric value to this. 
but I'm not going to put a value. I'm just going to define the type of data that it contains. I'm going to tap New to add another property. And in this case, I'm going to name this Wall Port. But I will leave this as a string because we might have our wall ports defined with a floor that they are on, with a room or a department. So there might be a mix of letters and numbers. Leaving this as a string ensures that we can enter what we need. I'm also going to add another one in here for the VLAN, which will be a number. Again, I'm leaving the values blank. Consider all the information that you might require to know about any given port in your switch or any object that you create. For now, I'm going to tap OK. To see this, I'm going to right click again on the object, data, and I'm going to open the shape data pane. Now I will resize this a little bit. You can see we have the three fields that we created, and each of these fields is, in fact, 100% editable. Now, I don't want to put anything into this at this time, so I'm going to close the shape data pane. We have our port all complete. I'm going to make sure that we deselect it, and then in one motion, I'm going to click on it to select it and drag it into my blank stencil. It will be named master with a number and that is not particularly helpful so right clicking on the master object you will see rename master as one of your options and I am simply going to rename this as port. To use it you simply drag it out of the stencils onto your drawing and you get your objects. And you can drag this out as many times as necessary. So the next part that I need for my switch will be the little lights that tell me that my port is transmitting and receiving information. So I'm going to start with my rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a new rectangle the same height as my port. Now I don't want it to be really wide here, I want it to be fairly narrow. And now we need the lights, so we'll use the ellipse tool, which can be found by clicking and holding on the drop down for the rectangle tool. Drawing a selection box that encompasses all three of these objects, I'm going to group them. I'm going to group them by right-clicking on the object and choosing Group. I do not require any shape data with these lights, so I'm going to make this into a stencil and rename accordingly. So I'm going to call this Port Lights. And going back to the Rectangle tool, start to draw the full switch. So I'm going to just draw my shape and this time I'm going to leave the line in view. Zooming in on the object. First thing I want to do is make some mounting holes for my new switch. So I'm going to switch back to the pointer tool and I'm going to duplicate the object. Again, holding down the control key and pulling down a copy. I'm going to adjust the width of this to make it just wide enough for where my mounting bracket holes are going to go and add the screw holes by adding another pair of ellipses and I need to zoom in so control mouse wheel again might need to use my little scroll bar here see duplicating that screw hole now we have our bracket I'm going to switch back to the pointer tool select all of these three objects. I'm going to go to the align and center those and then go to the position and I'm going to distribute them vertically and that'll make sure that my spacing is nice and even. Once that's done, group the object. 
I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to put this on one side of my switch hold down the control key and drag a copy of that to the other side of the switch this way I am assured that my screw holes the width of my bracket is identical now to start adding the ports and the lights so I'll begin by selecting a port in the stencil dragging this out and scaling it positioning it and begin duplicating that so holding down the control key making a copy of that and I'm going to just make five of these go across now to select all five of these I've got one selected holding the shift key click each subsequent shape with them all selected right click and group them again here I might want to consider adding a little bit of shape data to this group so right clicking on the group data define shape data I'm going to just name this port group this will be a string and OK now we can take this whole group and duplicate it again hold down the control key pull one down below use the rotate handle and rotate that 180 degrees you can nudge that into place as need be now we need the lights for our ports so I'll drag a stencil of the light onto the page roughly position it where I want it to go and again I need this to be the same size as the port so I'm going to scale this now again very difficult to see when it's zoomed out like this so we're gonna zoom in on that so we can see all of the bounding box controls and we can scale this accordingly duplicating this for each port now you can see in this case the space between them is not even so selecting all of these shapes by holding down the shift key and clicking each shape going to the position drop down on the home tab and choosing to distribute these horizontally the space between all of them is now even group the objects again duplicate the objects again and we have completed building our switch I'm going to zoom out so that we can see the whole switch and we're going to select the entire group of objects and group them so that again they will act as a single unit now here we want to think about more of the shape data related to this object so right clicking the object data define shape data and we'll start with manufacturer new maybe model new serial number change the type of data here to a number new maybe the height of the object and here I'm going to define it so I'm going to make this 1.75 inches add another new the width of the object and most server racks are 19 inches so I'm whoops not 13 sorry 19 inches oops keep typing in the wrong place and you might even consider the depth so now if we right click on our object and we go to the shape data we have all of these attributes that we can begin to modify and change as need be now one of the things that we can also do with this is change the height and width using the size and position pane that is accessed by going to view task panes size and position if I adjust the width I want the height to adjust accordingly and vice versa so in order for this to happen we must lock the aspect ratios of our object to do this 
we are going to need the developer tab in the ribbon. So we're going to go to file, options, we're going to choose the customized ribbon category and in the right column we're going to locate the developer tab which is currently unchecked. We're going to check that on and click OK. So now that we have the developer tab in our ribbon, we can come to that developer tab. We can look at the shape design set of tools to locate the protection button. And we are going to engage the aspect ratio. This will prevent anybody from adjusting the height independent of the width. With that done, we can tap OK. We can now take our object and drag it into our stencils. We will rename that switch. We can drag our switch onto our page anytime we need it. If we adjust the width in the size and position panel, you will notice that the height adjusts also without any distortion. Now we need to save our stencil. So we'll come back into the stencils pane. You will notice that there is now a save icon, which you can click on to save the stencil. It wants to save it in the My Shapes folder of the Documents folder within your account. So let it go where it's supposed to go. Name your stencil accordingly. And if I were to close this file, create a new file, when I'm in my blank drawing, I will not see my stencils here, so I will look for more shapes, and I will choose to open the stencil. By default, it will navigate to the My Shapes folder in the Documents. You can see there is your stencil. You can open it, and now you will be able to drag your objects on and use them as any other stencil object. With all of the shape data associated to our stencil, whenever we use it in the future, we will be able to select that shape, select the components. We can even click into our grouped object and get into the point where we are looking at the individual parts, all of the shape data for each, in this case, port or port group, as well as the entire object. I hope that you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please subscribe to our channel. We do put out videos as often as we can. You can also follow us on social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and you can find out more about the Computer Workshop and the classes we offer by visiting us at our website, www.tcworkshop.com. Until next time, take care for now.